when we started in January, never dreamed we'd be here now. And it still baffles me that they are still considering moving forward with this budget. So as much attention as needs to be given to this, we will give it. But I do know that you go into your district, and obviously I voted against it, but the poor people who voted for it are getting bombarded every day. So the people in your district, middle class, businesses, your mayors and first selectmen, other legislators, this is a process that need, the, the attention needs to stay on it 100%. And until it's done, we will continue to do this. We talk about the budget and the deficit now that we face. So we go four years ago, we were supposed to solve this problem, shared sacrifice. Biggest tax increase in the state's history. Right now, we're supposed to be sitting pretty. But instead, we're facing another $3 billion deficit. And now we're facing the second highest tax increase in the state's history. And guess what? After the next two years, at this moment in time, unless something crazy happens and we have this large influx of money and everybody's income just spikes and the world's a better place, we're facing a $1.5 billion deficit again two years from now. Where does it end, guys? Where does it end? This is obviously not working. I'm not an economist, but I can tell you this is not how we do it. The problem with running a budget on a deficit every year is I have heard, including last night, a Senate Democrat at a Chamber of Commerce event I was, talking about how great this property tax reform is. Well, first of all, I believe only 2.4% of the money is even going back to the towns. I don't know where the rest of it's going. But when we tell people, we're going to tax you, and then we're going to give it back, we don't have a good track record, guys, about doing that. Ask the hospitals. Ask the cities and towns who were supposed to get that a couple years ago. We're, sit, we're giving you more things to have sales tax on. We're taking more money from you, but we're going to give it back to you on this end. Don't believe it. And I'm not cynical, but I know what's happened. I'm a realist. And I see that it has never happened before, so there's no reason to believe it ha will happen now. The problem is, when we look for money, we go to transportation. We go to municipalities. That's where we go. We've done it before. It'll happen again because this is not solving the problem. We like to call this an equal opportunity budget. It equally hurts everyone from top to bottom, from businesses to the middle class and everyone above and below. But what makes it worse is this was done in the dark of night with no transparency and without over 40% of the state of Connecticut's legislators involved in the process. Not involved in the process at all, not for one minute. We're going to continue to ask the governor to do the right thing and either veto this budget or call on the legislators to say enough is enough. We can't fix something that has so many holes in it. We must start from the beginning.